Okay, so last time we, we talked about balancing acid-base reactions. We talked about what's an acid, what's a base, etc. And today we're going to combine that with the equilibrium skills that we have and start doing ice tables with acids and bases. And there's a lot of different ways that these problems can be presented to you. So you can be given an acid and a Ka and asked what the pH is and so on. Um, or you can be given a, a base and a Ka. Right, so you gotta pay attention to the finer details. Sometimes it looks like a regular old acid-base problem, but they've given you two concentrations. They've given you the acid concentration and the base concentration. And although that problem looks more difficult, it's actually the easiest of all of them. So you know, experience is key in all of these and attention to detail. So that's why I wanted to give your brain a little extra sugar this morning so that you can be focused and get that extra detail. So we, f we finished this up last time talking about this balancing act between hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. And, and if one concentration goes up, the other goes down and vice versa. So that's the whole analogy of the seesaw. But if you look at the powers of 10 that we're dealing with, it's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, and they're all really small numbers. There's it's not a lot of hydronium ion in water when you're talking about you know, like normal numbers, like 50 or 100 or whatever, it's all times 10 to the minus something. So in decimal form, these are the concentrations we're talking about. So if we have a really strongly basic solution, that might be 0.01 concentration or 0.01 moles of hydroxide per liter of solution. And because the base is so high, that means the acid concentration is really, really low. And so it's down there at 0 0.00000000001. So if the acid or base goes up, the other goes way down. And, we're, and we get tired of saying zero, zero, zero or writing them all out. And so that's where a log scale comes in handy. And so if we just take this, this P function, so PX is the minus log of X. And so if we have this concentration and we take the minus log of that concentration, the minus log, so if we have the log of 10 to the A equals A. So that's, that's the basics of what we're talking about. We're talking about log base 10. So whatever the exponent is, 10 to the A exponent, the log just brings that exponent down. And you see how that saves a lot of time. If I've got 10 to the minus two, I take the log of that and I get minus two. And, but I don't want a negative number, I'd prefer to have a positive number, so I just change the sign. So the, the px of something that's 10 to the minus two is the minus log of that number, it is just two. So do you see how it changes the sign of the exponent and brings it down? That's all the pH scale is. So if these are hydronium ion concentrations, then this, 10 to the minus 11 is the hydronium ion concentration, then the pH is 11, okay? Up here, we're at the hydroxide ion concentration is times is 10, 10 to the negative three. So the pOH, the minus log of the hydroxide ion concentration is three. So that's just super convenient for us. And so we can write these numbers down in, in easily memorable numbers like 4.5 and 9.2 and so on, as opposed to always trying to write times 10 to the, we just get rid of that, okay, and just write the exponent. So let's review the properties of logarithms because they come into play a little bit. So, this, this is that definition of that P function. P time, you know, the P function of anything is just the minus log of that number. And so uh, if we have two numbers multiplied by each other, we get into the properties of logs here, they play a role. And so that's the minus log of, of X times Y. But if we have numbers inside the log that are multiplied, we can pull them out and have a sum of the logs. And so we can split that apart. So that's the property that you might not remember, okay? So you see the product, the log of a product is the sum of the logs of the individual pieces. And that's really handy, okay? And then this is the minus log of X, so that's PX. And this is the minus log of Y, so that's PY. 
And so the P function kind of distributes through. If I have the P function of XY, that's equal to the PX plus PY. And we'll apply this to our equilibrium problems here in a minute. Now, it's also a big deal to know how to get out of this log system. And so if we're given the pH, how do we get to the hydronium ion concentration? You got to do the anti-log. And so the anti-log base 10, you know, x is equal to 10 to the minus px. So if you look at these two equations are opposites of each other. If I know x, I can calculate px. If I know px, I can calculate x. So you've got to be able to go backwards and forwards. And if you look at your calculator, a lot of times the, 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 the log, the second function of that button is 10 to the x. Or if it's 10 to the x button, the, the second function is the log. And so they show you that you know, that's the, they're opposites of each other. If you see e to the x key, the opposite of that is natural log. So it's the same kind of thing, but that's a log base e. This is a log base 10. So hopefully this sounds like some review. This is covered in, in the, in the uh, Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills <laughs> from uh, K through 12. And so let's apply this to acid-base equilibria. So here we have this Kw equals Ka times Kb. We talked about that last time. Um, let's now take the minus log of both of these. So let's look at the pKw. So the pKw is this P function times that product of Ka and K, Kb. So that's on the left is the minus log of 10 to the four, minus 14, that's Kw. And on the right is that minus log of Ka times Kb. Well, this one is easily done, right? I can, I can bring that 14 down and change the sign. And so this is gonna be 14. Oops, the arrow's not going exactly in the right spot. And then I can distribute that log and have the sum of the logs of the individual pieces. So that's the minus log of Ka and the minus log of Kb, which is the pKa and the pKb. So that's 14 is equal to the pKa plus the pKb. So this Ka, Kb thing would be the, the equilibrium constants for the forward and reverse reactions in terms of uh, acid-base equilibrium. So let's say I have ammonia reacting with water to produce hydroxide ion, that's gonna be the Kb equation, because it's a base. If I have ammonium ion, NH4+, plus, reacting with water to make hydronium ion and, and ammonia, that's the acid form of that equation, that's Ka. If I know one, I can determine the other using this equation. I can use this top one if I'm given Ka and I want to find Kb, I know these, I know these two. And so then uh, I could just divide Kw by Ka and get Kb. But a lot of times I'm given this number. I'm given the pKa and a base equation. And, and so I want to find Kb. So I can use this equation. I could subtract the pKa from 14 and get pKb, and then do uh, this right here, 10 to the minus pKb would be Kb. So these are some of the things that we will use uh, as we go forward. All right, so now eat your candy, if you've got your candy. <laughs> okay, because we'll get into the ice table problems in about, you know, five minutes. Let's apply this, this natural log or, or this um, uh, logarithmic uh, stuff to the pH and the pOH. So here's the Kw equation, the, the auto ionization uh, constant for water. And it's this relationship between hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. And that's the seesaw. If one goes up, the other goes down because the product equals a constant. And so I could take the minus log of all of these. pKw is equal to the P function of all of these, of this product. I could distribute that through with the minus logs. And so I end up with this equation, which is super helpful. If I know the pH of a solution, then this equation allows me to determine the pOH. If I know the pH, I can get the uh, concentration of hydronium ion con uh, by using this equation, the anti-log. 
if I know the pOH, I could get the the uh, concentration of hydroxide using the antilog. And so this page is fantastic. It's got lots of helpful equations. So you can put a star by this one because we will use that. And you can put a star by this one. And, and of course, these are just your base equations for the P function and for the antilog. So we will use these. These, these have to be um, in your head. I mean, you got to memorize these, but more importantly, know how to use them and when to use them. Okay. Any questions about this or anything else you should clarify? I'm not following the question. Um, I think you were saying something about a classic class where, like, we can write it as, like... Okay, maybe it. maybe this is it. We we say pH, and that's that was the traditional way to say it, because we used to just write it like this, H+. plus. That's the way we used to write acid-base equilibrium, but it really doesn't exist like an H+. plus. It okay. attaches itself to water. Okay. So so this is this is the new H plus, but we didn't change this. So we just kept the H for pH, but we really are talking about hydronium ion. Okay. Does that help? Yeah, so. Yeah, I think you said something about like, um, we could write it as like the hydrogen ion in an aqueous solution. Yeah, like yeah, so sometimes people, you know, in the past and in the older books, you'll see H plus aqueous, right? Okay. Yeah, uh, and that's where the pH came from, just by itself, H by itself. Okay. But we uh, we adjusted, or I guess updated the 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 how we write out the equations to be more accurate here, and writing it out as H three O plus because that proton will attach to water. Uh, but we never did go back and force everybody to change this because pH is just something that's so easy to say. P hydronium wouldn't carry the same, you know, thing, and it would also be trying to change language because now pH has sort of made it into um, you know, health and nutrition and all these other things, um, um, and even like personal care products. The reason that baby uh, uh, baby wash, you know, Johnson's baby wash doesn't sting your eyes is it's pH adjusted to the the fluid around your eye, and so you don't feel it really. It is a, but if you put regular soap or shampoo in your eye, it stings because there's a pH imbalance. It's acid base reactions happening in your eye, and you're your nerves are saying, hey, you've got something in your eye. Um, if the pH matches, you don't know something's there unless it's a particle. Yeah, so the Johnson baby wash, you can actually get it in your eye and it uh, it doesn't sting. So it's a commercial for them, I guess. And so then, yeah, down here at the bottom, I finish it out. You could find the hydronium ion concentration by taking that, that 10 to the minus pH would give you the hydronium ion concentration and 10 to the minus pOH would give you the hydroxide ion concentration. <clears throat> so let's put these into play. Um, <clears throat> here are our acid dissociation constants for several of the reactions. This was acetic acid, nitrous acid, uh, hydrogen sulfate, um, or hydrosulfous acid. Uh, and then we have uh, the minus log of these Ka values. See, this is kind of cumbersome to write, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, or 4.6 times 10 to the minus 4. If you just take the minus log of that, these are some really nice numbers. Like this one is captured, it's a pKa of 3.3, much easier to communicate and write. This one is 1 1.9. You see that they're very close to the exponents. So this is an exponent of 2, this is 1.9, because this is close to 1. If this was 1 times 10 to the minus 2, then this would be 2. It's a little bit higher, okay? So that means it's it's not as small a number as 10 to the minus 2. It's a little bigger than 10 to the minus 2. And so uh, it's 10 to the minus 1.9. <laughs> and so the minus log, log of that is 1.9. Uh, here, this is very close to 10 to the minus 4. It's 4.6, and so it's going to be smaller than 4. It's going to be 3.3. Um, so this one's 5, but it's 1.8, so it's a little bit less than 5, so it'd be 4.7. So that's a just a, a fun skill I like to 
play around with. I look at the Ka and try to predict in my head what would the what would the pKa be, and then I type it into the calculator and see how close I was. So here's here's <coughs> two times ten to the minus eleven. So if it was 1 times 10 to the minus 11, the KB, PKB would be 11. So it's going to be 10 point something. I don't know. Let's say 10.5. So let's see what we got. Not 10.7. Anyway, it's just a fun game I play. So here's, uh, here's 10, 5.6. So this is going to be uh, pretty low because 5.6 is a big number. So it's going to be 9.3 probably. Hey, I got it. And I promise I didn't cheat. And then... Uh, the 1.8 times 10 minus 5, that PKB is is uh, 4.7. Do you see how handy that log scale is, right? It just gets rid of all of these powers of 10 and everything. Real easy to write out. So a lot of times you look up these acids and you'll see things like this in a table. You'll say NO3 or NO2, sorry, NO2. <laughs> And it'll say PKB equals 10.7. You know, that's very nice and compact, okay? In forensics, I know a lot of you are interested in forensic chemistry. Um, when you look up the drugs and so on, it'll it'll have PKA values listed, even if it's a base. And so that's um, that's sometimes irritating, but that's that's the way they do it. So here's a comparison of the acids and their conjugate bases. <clears throat> and the Ka values, sort of the just the powers of 10 of those Ka values. And you can see if you take the pKa of uh, you know 10 to the 0, the pKa is 0. The 10 to the minus 2, that pKa is going to be 2. 10 to the minus 4, that pKa is 4, 6, 8, etc. So you should be able to look at these and figure out, okay, yeah, I'm just bringing that exponent down when I take the P of that. KB, same thing. So 10 to the minus 14 for water. The uh, PK B is, B is 14, um, uh, you know, 12, 10, 8, and so on. And just uh, PKW is 14. And so just look at these. The PKA plus the PKB should equal 14, and they do in all of these cases, right? 8 plus 6 or 10 plus 4 or 12 plus 2. So that pKa plus the pKb is going to equal the pKw. So let's apply pH to that problem from last lecture. So this is just a repeat of the problem we did last time. Last time I asked what the hydronium ion concentration was and what the hydroxide ion concentration was. But a lot of times problems just ask what the pH are and what the pH and the pOH are. And so we did this whole thing about, you know, 1 minus X is roughly equal to 1, and that's a good assumption if this CHA, this original amount of acid, divided by Ka, and so in this case our Ka was 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, if, if the concentration of our acid is divided by that Ka is greater than 100, then our error will be pretty small. And so we can just get rid of this minus x, and then the problem is much easier. It's just the square root of CHA times Ka. <clears throat> and it's always that way. If you, uh, if you pass the assumption test, then you can cut right to that equation that the hydronium ion concentration is equal to the square root of the acid concentration times that Ka value. Okay, so we get 0 0.0042. Okay, so let's take the minus log of that number and we get 2.4 for the pH. And then that plus the pOH equals 14. And so we should subtract this number from 14 uh, in order to get the pOH value. So memorize this equation, pH plus pOH equals 14. And so we can subtract 2.4 from 14 and we get 11.6. So we've satisfied what the problem was asking for, but I've got the hydronium ion concentration here. Well, I'd just like to calculate the, the hydroxide ion concentration. 
So what equation would I use to calculate the hydroxide ion concentration? I've got the pOH right here. And so I just want to get out of this. How do I undo the, the P function? It's the antilog. And so it would be this 10 to the minus 11.6. So I type in, if I have 11.6 in my calculator, I change the sign to make it negative. So it's minus 11.6. And then I hit the 10 to the X key, and that's what you get, okay? <clears throat> Any questions on this? This is a straightforward problem. You're just given the acid concentration and ask for the pH, and you have to have the Ka to do that, okay? Okay, let's make things a little more interesting. Um, I keep talking about this um, this uh, assumption, right? This good assumption. When does it become bad? Like, like what would the what would the error be? You know, if we look at this CHA, what if we multiplied KA over here on this other side? Okay. Um, if the concentration was less than one hundred times the KA. Well, in this acetic acid situation, it would be a really small concentration. So this assumption would work if I had 0.1 acetic acid or 0.01 acetic acid. But if I get to 0 0.001 acetic acid, then this assumption fails. Does that make sense? Right? So let's just see what, what the error would be if this concentration was exactly 100 times Ka. So let's put this concentration in for CHA. Uh, if we calculate it with the assumption, it's just down here, right? X is equal to Ka times CHA. And so this would be my concentration of the hydronium ion. So 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 would be my concentration for, for, the, for X, basically, for the hydronium ion. So that's, that's using the assumption. Let's use the quadratic equation. So we come back over here. Now we don't cancel that X. We have to get it in its standard form. So this is where you would, on your own time, do the algebra to make sure that you check this out and know how to do it. Here's the quadratic formula. We put in all of our values. And here's what we get for our positive and negative roots. The positive root is 1.7 times 10 to the fourth. Oh, it should be negative fourth. <laughs> Let me put a minus sign there. And negative 1.89 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay. Now, notice that one's kind of grayed out because that's the nonsense root. That would mean I have, like, negative concentration in terms of acid. So let's look at this positive root. It's pretty close to the 1.8, and so let's calculate our percent error. So if I have the 1.8 minus the 1.7 divided by the 1.7, that's 5% error. So this assumption that I'm telling you to use is, is a 5% assumption. So as long as you're above that threshold, your error is less than 5%. So that's okay. You get a 95, right? So if you've got your calculation and it's really close to that value, you're like, okay, it's still 95% accurate. If it's way above that, then it's 99.999% accurate. And then what I've done here with the quadratic formula is, uh, is general. So this is the quadratic formula for all of the acid equilibria. So, you know, essentially algebraically, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. I've got all your constants in there. So this is the generic uh, quadratic formula with Ka and CHA built in. And so it's right there in the, in the, uh, in the video for you. Let's look at other kinds of acids. Some acids have multiple protons that come off, okay? Like citric acid or oxalic acid or phosphoric acid, or sulfurous acid. Um, we've been dealing with acetic acid this whole time. And so I went ahead and calculated the cutoff value for that assumption. If the Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus five, then that, that, uh, that cutoff value, 100 Ka, is uh, 1.8 times 10 to the minus three. So as long as my acid concentration was greater than this number, I could use that assumption. 
for citric acid, it would be 7.4 times 10 to the minus 2. But when we get to the second proton, it's a little problematic because I can't multiply this by 100 and have a threshold because I bump into the first proton. So for these assumptions, uh, for polyprotic acids, the best place to be is halfway between the two Ka's. But essentially, the, you know, it's, it's best trying to use this assumption for the, the first protons that come off. Um, or if you have really far separated Ka's, you can, you can find these um, assumption points to work with the polyprotic acids. So we'll get into polyprotic acids in probably three more lectures where we really dive into the balancing the various uh, protons and which ones come off when. So let's put a twist on this. Sometimes we're calculating pH, but we're given a base. So what are the pH and pOH of a one molar solution of aqueous ammonia? pKa, 9.255. So your first step is to look at the words in the problem and figure out, is it an acid or is it a base? We know that amines and ammonia are bases. So you have a base, so write out the balanced reaction. You have to know what ammonia is. That's, that's basic information. So ammonia is NH3. And when it reacts with water, it steals a proton because it's a base. And it makes NH4 plus and hydroxide ion. So that's your basic balanced equation. But the problem here is you're given a pKa. So this A is incredibly important. That means that goes with the acid form of this compound, not with the basic form of this compound. So it doesn't go with this reaction. So this reaction requires Kb. So there's a bunch of ways we could do this, uh, but because we're given the pKa, let's use the equation that has pKb in it. And so we have that equation that the pKa plus the pKb is equal to pKw. So this is 14. And so we can solve for the pKb by subtracting the pKa from 14. So 14 minus 9.255 is 4.745. So that's the, P, the pKb. And so now that goes with this reaction. And so Kb is uh, 10, or the antilog, the 10 to the minus 4.745, so 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And so here's our equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. You've got the concentrations of everything equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. This is, this is where people go wrong and they don't know they've gone wrong. They use a Ka for a basic reaction and all the math is the same and, and everything you know in the table works the same, but their answer is completely bogus because they've just got the wrong constant. So it's real easy to make that mistake if you're not paying attention to detail. So if you feel like you're not a detail-oriented person, this is the place to work on those skills. So this, you think this class is only about chemistry. This is a part of the chemistry class that's not chemistry. This is about becoming a meticulous person and reading that problem and, and noticing this tiny little subscript right here is so important. And unless you pay attention to every little detail like that, then you may think you know the chemistry, but you're not meticulous enough to get it right. And so you've got to really pay attention to all those little details. And that just comes with practice, doing problems. There's lots of problems in the book on pH and pOH and everything. There's problems online. There's tutorials online. So my videos are not enough to teach you this. You've got to do problems and, and drill. It's like lifting weights. You can't cram this stuff. We've got a long period here before the test. And so you need to be doing problems over the weekend and you know whenever you get a chance so make make a sacrifice say okay i'm going to 
uh, not watch my show <laughs> and I'm going to do some problems. And then you can wait and that Christmas break reward will be a nice 12 hour binge watch of all the episodes that you missed. Okay. And it, believe me, it's worth it because you want to trade that for a good background in science. You know, if that's where your mission is because the show or the game is not going to pay any dividends, but being meticulous will. Even if you decide you don't want to be a chemist, being meticulous will pay dividends. So a lot of people say, well, I never use that material again. Well, maybe it wasn't about the material. Maybe it was about teaching you how to be meticulous and you can always use those skills. Okay, so what? here's the rest of that problem. Now we've, we've found the, uh, the, the KB, we have the equation and we make the ice table. We have, you know, one minus X and X and X. And this, we can assume that this is um, small because again, our KB is, is, uh, is 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. And here's our concentration. So that divided by that number is way greater than a hundred. And so we can, we can assume that it's just X squared over one. We can rearrange that. And now instead of X being the hydronium ion concentration, it's the hydroxide ion concentration. So we're actually looking for this X right there. And it's that square root. In this case, it's C base, not C acid and KB. But you see, it's the same equation really, because it's the same ice table and the same math. But if, if you got, if you didn't convert Ka to Kb, right here is where your error would occur. <clears throat> and so we get the hydroxide ion concentration of 0 0.0042. We could take the minus log of that and the pOH is 2.38. And then the pH is 14 minus that number, so 11.62. And then the hydronium ion concentration, we could take that 11.62, change the sign, hit the anti-log key, and it's 2.38 times 10 to the minus 12. So really, really low concentration of acid and a decently high concentration of base. And this is a really strongly basic pH. We we rarely talk, you know, just in general about pOH. Most of the time we talk about pH. And when a pH is high, like pH 11, that number is high, that means it's a basic solution. Because remember, these are the negative exponents of the concentration. So it's, it's saying that my, my hydronium ion concentration is on the order of 10 to the minus 11. So it's gonna be a really low concentration of acid which means there's a high concentration of base. <clears throat> Pretty easy so far? Yes. Okay. These exponents are, are really pick, are like, uh, it's really sensitive to the number of decimal places in the exponent. Yeah, and so it'll, it's real susceptible to rounding errors in the pH and pOH. So, I mean, it could be as different as like 2.4 or like 2.2 or maybe even 2.1, depending upon how many decimal places you have in that exponent. Um, like if we just did 11 instead of 11.62, it would be one times 10 to the minus 12, okay, or 11. Yeah, it'd be a, one times 10 to the minus 11. And, and so if we did 11.9, it'd be really close to 10 to the minus 12. So it'd be like nine times uh, 10 to the minus 11, yeah. So let's talk about the common ion effect. What if I have uh, this kind of problem? What are the pH and pOH of a solution that is one molar acetic acid and one molar sodium acetate? So I've got both the acid and the base in this reaction. And we've been using acetic acid this whole time, so we still know the Ka. So Ka is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. Okay, so we write out the acid reaction. We have the ice table 
and we have the one minus X, but over here on the right, we have a one plus X, but we can still make those assumptions. In fact, that assumption is even more strong now because I have one mole per liter of this acid over here. And it's going to want to go be, it's going to want to be a product because I have zero moles. I start out initially claiming there's zero moles of hydronium ion. So this is going to want to go forward. But look what I've got over here. I've already got products. So Le Chatelier's principle is going to push this reaction backwards and make X even smaller. So that common ion effect is a Le Chatelier effect. If I've already got some product over here, it just can't go forward very much before it hits that equilibrium value. Okay, so, so this is going to be a really small X. And so I can ignore it here and I can ignore it there. And this actually makes the problem easier. So here's my Ka. And I've got numbers for this one. And I've got a number for this one. So I've got one on top, one on bottom, and the X. So I can solve for X, and X is just equal. Again, the ones can cancel, but if they didn't cancel, you would just use algebra, multiply these across, and I have uh, X equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So that's point, let's go ahead and write it out, point zero, zero, zero. Um, zero one eight. Okay. So without that acetate and just putting one molar of acetate in water um, and let it come to equilibrium. My, my hydronium ion concentration was 0 0.0042. Look what happened when I added some product. It really reduced the amount of that reaction going forward. So my acid concentration dropped by two orders of magnitude. It's really much smaller. And that's the common ion effect. It already has a common ion with the product. And so it's, um, it doesn't go forward very far. And so the pH is 4.74. Um, it used to be point like 2.3 uh, or, or something like that. And then here's the um, pOH, 9.26. And if I want to calculate the hydroxide ion concentration, it's 5 times 10 to the minus 10. This is a really common problem when you have some base and some acid in the same problem. And if you know those concentrations, the problems become pretty easy. So this, um, so this, uh, <clears throat> this next slide here is not in your notes. And so just find a blank sheet of paper or a blank screen. And let's, let's play around with this pH and pKa formula applied to the acid equilibrium constant. So what if we took the minus log of both sides? We took the pKa. Now we have the minus log of three things. We could split that out into a sum. So let's split out the minus log of the hydronium ion concentration. If we split that out, that becomes pH, minus log of that. And then since this is a product inside the log, it becomes a sum. And so then we have this minus log of the acid, piece, I mean the acid piece and the base piece. If we rearrange this to solve for pH, the log moves over to the other side. And so we end up with this pH equals the pKa plus this adjustment factor, which is the base and the acid uh, ratio. And so if we have the base and the acid given in the problem, then this is what we call the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So these guys, I'll tell you, must have been a lot easier to get your name on an equation back in the day, right? They just took the minus log of the equilibrium constant expression and they got a, the equation named after them. I've been looking my whole life to find some little math trick that I could do like this and get my name on an equation. So still no luck, all right? So, but this is just the equilibrium constant expression with the P function added to it.
and rearrange. But look how useful it is. This pH of an acid is going to be close to the pKa value, and then it's corrected by the actual concentrations of the base and the acid. So here's our problem. This is just a copy. You don't have to write this whole thing down. This is just the previous slide copied down. Look how fast we could have done this problem, right? What's the pH? Well, we know the pKa for that acid. Um, Let's see, let me go back. Let's just do it right here. So <clears throat> the pKa for acetic acid is equal to the minus log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. I think that's 4.74. Can you check my math on that real quick? And so the pH is going to equal 4.74 plus the log of the base over the acid. So the base is the, is the sodium acetate, C base, and the acetic acid is C acid. So it happens to be one over one, which the log of one is zero. So we end up with 4.74, kind of a funny seven. So no algebra or anything. We just use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. If we've got a number for the base and a number for the acid, we can jump right to this simplification. Let's apply it to another problem. So we could go through and do the, the equilibrium constant and the ice table and everything like that. Or we could go right down here to the Henderson-Hasselbalch Henderson equation, put in the pKa for this acid, We've got to get the, we've got to recognize, again, paying attention to detail, what's the base concentration, what's the acid concentration, and then I get the pH, okay? Notice the pH is a little higher because we have more base than acid. You see that in the problem? Let's flip the two. Let's make the acid one and the base uh, 0.5. And so if the acid is one and the base is 0.5, we have a flipped fraction there, and now the pH is lower because we got a little more acid than base. And so notice how this Henderson-Hasselbalch is, is great. It, it talks about the, the behavior of the acid and then the correction factor. So that's the way I think of it. This acid has a particular pKa, which is a pH range where it wants to be, and then the relative ratios of acid or base can adjust it up or down. And this is how we make buffers. And so we're going to talk about buffers later in the course, but this is the basis of buffering solutions is to adjust the, the pKa value with a little bit of a ratio of base to acid to adjust the pH right where we want it. And your body is based on buffered solutions and, and everything. So it's a really important uh, part of our physiology. All right, that's, that's all I have for today.